Well, shared value is really no more than the idea of making money by solving societal problems. Uh, it's a new mindset for business to say that the social issues that surround us aren't just a matter of philanthropy, they aren't just a matter of corporate social responsibility. They're really new markets, new opportunities, new ways to make money. And how do companies far often too focused on those quarterly earnings results and the stock price turn their attention practically, realistically, to solving some of society's problems? Well, it's a challenge, Michael, because in fact, society's problems don't get solved in a single quarter. Yep. And so it does take a longer term perspective. But it isn't necessarily that long. I mean, we're seeing things like uh, National Australia Bank here, which has developed a new program for borrowers who get into trouble. Now, most banks, when you get into trouble, they layer on fees, they layer on costs, more interest. You just get further and further behind. Well, National Australia Bank said that's not a very good way to do business. What if we actually counseled people proactively and found workout arrangements? They've counseled 100,000 people. They've reduced their bad debts by 20 percent. They've saved $7 million. It didn't take very long for that to show up in their bottom line. And it's a better way of doing business. Companies know all about and always speak about threats versus opportunities. Yes. Give me an example of, because it was mentioned there in that little animation there, about how you could turn a threat into a, a potential money maker opportunity but also do good for society that's one example of the nab bag where has it worked well in the states that you're aware of? oh it's worked uh, in in many places all over the world and one of the really remarkable things we're seeing is how much interest there is in in um, Asia in Latin America as well as the US um, you know I, I think of um, things like uh, Dow Chemical uh, came up with a cooking oil that's used by most of the fast food restaurants in the United States now and it's a heart healthy cooking oil a very low, uh, zero trans fat, and very high in the kinds of fats in olive oil and so on that's good for your heart. Well, you know, this was a threat that fast food restaurants were using cooking oils that were very bad for you. And they were getting a bad reputation and they were getting attacked by many people. Exactly. And Dow put in the research and development to come up with an entirely new oil that had the same cooking properties was much better for people's health. And getting back to the bottom line, and I suppose the cynic in me would suggest there are certainly PR benefits for companies sure. in, engaged in shared value too. There absolutely are, but you know, I think one of the challenges of getting this concept across is it's really about business strategy. You know, it was developed with my colleague Michael Porter at Harvard Business School, who's known for his work on corporate strategy and competitive advantage. And it's great for reputation, absolutely, but it's really about the core business strategy of the company. When a company feels it's under threat though, and then you yes. would know this very well, that, yes. that's when they naturally default to that, that bunker attitude, looking inward, taking care of just the bottom, bottom line and, and fearful of any potential future. How do, you, how do you gentle those companies through this to actually keep them in that mindset when perhaps they're going through a downturn and that's the default position? Well, you know, companies do spend so much money on social initiatives and corporate responsibility and often that isn't achieving a lot of impact. Right. And so it isn't always a question of finding new pockets of money when things go bad, it's often a question of getting much greater benefit. Uh, for example, we've been working with extractives companies and uh, the license to operate and the relationship with the communities where they're mining is tremendously important to them. Mm. They spend billions of dollars on this, but much of it is quite random quite, you know, acts of philanthropy, charity and so on, it's not really contributing to the welfare of the community. If you begin to take a shared value approach, you say, what does the company do with this money and these resources that really creates a strong economic cluster in the region? Mm. It's a different and better way of using the same resources. Are more chief executives both here in the States and around the world switching on to this concept, Mark? Uh, Absolutely. Seeing the early adapters like the bank here, like Dow Chemicals. Yes, States. yes. No, what, what, what is remarkable, you know, this idea emerged from an article that Porter and I wrote about four years ago. Yeah. Uh, and the momentum for it just continues to build. I'm, I'm here for the Shared Value Forum here, as you mentioned, but uh, I'll be back in the States for our annual Shared Value Summit, where we have about 500 people from 30 countries coming, uh, about uh, a dozen major corporate CEOs. And companies, we're finding, are really grabbing onto this. Is there a role for government in this? There absolutely is, both for government and for nonprofits. And how does that work? Well, what we're finding is that government policy can encourage corporations to invest in shared value initiatives, which can in turn save the government money. Mm. And nonprofits can find ways of working with companies that help them develop profit making ventures that serve the mission of the nonprofit. And the really powerful thing is when you have a profit making solution, it can scale up.
mm. in a way that nonprofits have have to struggle so hard to try and do. It's a fascinating conversation and a concept too. Mike Kramer, thanks for bringing it to us today. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael.